Hey guys, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do another book recommendations video. I feel like I just have so many ideas for these book recommendation videos, so expect to keep them coming for a little while. So I have a couple books I want to recommend today that have strong female characters or feminist themes because it is Women's History slash Women's Rights Month and I wanted to recommend some books that have some strong badass female characters that you can read this month or any month for that matter. I love all of these books and I can't wait to talk about them so let's get straight into the video. So these first two books should not be a surprise to anybody because I talk about these books so much on my channel and they are the first two books in the Orisha trilogy by Tomi Adeyemi and these are West African inspired YA fantasy books and this is the first one Children of Blood and Bone and the second one is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. The third one is still unreleased but you still have time to catch up before the third one comes out and basically this follows Zaylee and a couple of other characters who basically go on a journey to bring magic back to the land after the monarchy stripped the land of magic from the magi and they basically just go on a fantastical journey to bring magic back and i absolutely love this series there are so many badass female characters in this book including zaylee and amari who are two of our main characters and they basically fight so many different things like oppression and race issues and sexual harassment and class issues and just a number of different things and i just really love this series and tomi adeyemi writes such badass women and I gave both of these books five out of five stars because they are just amazing there is such lush world building so many different complex relationships and I love the magic system people often describe this series as Avatar the Last Airbender meets Black Panther and I feel like that's pretty accurate I haven't seen Black Panther myself but I do see like the similar vibes from it and I just really really enjoy this series and it's absolutely fantastic so if you're looking for a lush fantasy series that you can really immerse yourself into that also has some badass female characters then I highly recommend this series. So the next book I have is The Beautiful by Renee Adier and this is a YA historical fiction slash fantasy book that has to do with vampires and it follows our main character Celine Rousseau who flees her life as a dressmaker in Paris after an incident and she joins a convent of nuns in New Orleans to get a fresh start and kind of like put herself into society and she ends up coming upon a secret society called the Court of Lions and it all just kind of unravels from there. So I actually really really enjoyed this. I actually had considered DNFing this when I first started reading it for Spookathon in October of last year because it is a little bit slow to start and it has a lot of like world building in the beginning and you don't really get much like fast-paced stuff until the latter half of the story but I really really enjoyed this because Renee Adier's writing style is absolutely gorgeous and descriptive and her main character uh, Celine is just so badass and the fact that she's leaving behind what she's known her entire life to come to a whole different country and start over I just think is really really cool there's also also other badass characters in this book like her best friend Pippa she's definitely more like reserved than Celine but she's still badass in her own way and there's Odette who's in the court of lions who's also badass and she like wears pants in a time period that like no one else does and she's just like the gay icon we all deserve so I just love all the characters in the beautiful and I think there's definitely lots of badass women in here and there's so many like quotes that are kind of feminist in tone that I had annotated when I first read it and I just really really enjoyed everything about this so if you're looking for a really atmospheric book with badass female characters vampires it takes place in new orleans in the 1800s it's absolutely beautiful in the writing style as well so i highly recommend this one it's fabulous so the next book i have was one of my favorites from last year and that is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed you've probably heard this talked about on booktube because this is one of the most popular books of 2018 but i didn't get to read it until last year but i really really enjoyed this so this is a adult historical fiction novel which normally I don't read too much of but this one I had heard so many good things about so I decided to pick it up and this one follows our main character Monique who is a low-level journalist and she's not very like high on the rung in the journaling community but she gets selected to interview a Hollywood recluse, Evelyn Hugo, who is notorious for having seven husbands throughout her Hollywood career. And basically, uh, she was a 50s and 60s movie star, and she's never done an interview before. So Monique gets chosen to interview her, and this is basically just Evelyn Hugo recalling her old Hollywood life. 
So I absolutely loved this book, not only because the writing was beautiful, that it had to do with old Hollywood, or even, you know, that this plot was just so intricate and well put together, but Taylor Jenkins Reid just really fleshed out all the characters so well here, and she wrote so many amazing characters that you come to care about, and all of the relationships are just so different and complex between each other, and I just absolutely loved that about it. So basically in this book, Evelyn Hugo is like recounting her life as I mentioned before, and she is just so badass because she takes what she wants from the world, and she really just grabs the world by the balls, and she takes what she wants, and she knows what she wants, and she doesn't let herself get subjected to less than she knows she's worth and i just absolutely love this book because all of the female characters in this book were really just like badass and i loved all of them and the writing also has a very feminist undertone to it and i annotated the hell out of this book when i read it because there were so many like feminist quotes in here that i just really really loved this book is also really, really diverse, but it's not trying too hard, and there's Cuban characters, black characters, white characters, there's bisexual characters, there's gay characters, there's queer characters. This book is just really, really amazing and definitely one of the best books I have ever read in my life, so I highly recommend this one. It's absolutely amazing. So the next book I have is Scars Like Wings by Erin Stewart. This is another YA hard-hitting contemporary that follows our main character, Ava Lee, whose family was in a really tragic house fire and she she lost pretty much everyone in her family and she has 60% of burns covering her body now and this book just basically chronicles her life trying to come to terms with her new body and kind of navigating the relationships that she's had before the fire and the ones that she's making afterwards and I really really enjoyed this book it's definitely one of the best hard-hitting contemporaries I've ever read I gave it five stars and I just loved the perseverance that Ava Lee has and she's determined to not let her burns and her scars define her and she's just so witty and funny and hilarious despite everything and she's a little bit sarcastic and a little bit pessimistic but overall as a character she's so so strong and so inspiring and so is her best friend Harper and together they just are like badass people who are getting over their trauma and like handling it like a boss. So overall, I really enjoyed this and had a really great message about not letting your body define you or your trauma define you, and I just absolutely adored this. So if you're looking for a great YA hard-hitting contemporary to make you cry your eyes out, then I highly recommend this one. The audiobook is also narrated really, really well. So the next book I have to recommend is one that I actually read recently, and I loved it so much that so far it's my favorite book of 2020, and nothing has topped it so far, and that is Orpheus Girl by Brainer Bell Henry. This one is a kind of newer release. It just got released in October of last year, and I absolutely loved this book. It basically follows our main character, Raya, who lives in a conservative Texas town with her grandmother, and she falls in love with her best friend, and they both get outed, and they get sent to conversion therapy camp, and this book is definitely not for the light of heart. It's definitely very, very graphic and very, very hard-hitting. So basically, our main character, Raya, and her best friend, Sarah, are just so badass because they go through conversion therapy camp, but they don't let the ignorance surrounding queer people bring them down and I just really really enjoyed that about this. So Sarah and Raya just try so hard to be together and get out of conversion therapy camp and they just have like oodles and oodles of perseverance and determination to get out of the situation that they're in and I just really really found that endearing and I loved it so much and queerness is something that I battled with a lot myself in high school so I really definitely like understood this book on a personal level and I wasn't able to come out in high school and Raya did and she faced the consequences tenfold and she's just way more ballsy than I could ever be and I'm just so so proud that a book like this exists and I just loved it so much and I resonated with it so much. This was a five star book like I said my favorite of 2020 so far so I highly recommend this one but it's definitely not for the light of heart so definitely check the trigger warnings before you read this one but I absolutely loved it. So the next book I have to recommend is Love From A to Z by S.K. Ali, and this is a YA contemporary romance that follows our two main characters, Adam and Zainab, and Adam has multiple sclerosis, so he drops out of school and moves back home to Qatar, and Zainab basically tells off her teacher, who is extremely racist and Islamophobic, and so she gets sent to stay with her aunt in Qatar for a couple of weeks to kind of just, like, 
get away, take her mind off things, but also kind of like a punishment. And so basically Adam and Zainab end up meeting at the airport and then striking up a friendship and eventually a romance. I really, really enjoyed this story and I thought it was a really great blend of culture and romance and everything like that. And there's also just great rep in this book. And I've read some own voices review for this book before and I've heard that it's good Muslim representation. So I stand by this book. I highly recommend it. It was just overall fantastic and it made me laugh out loud. I loved it so much and our main character Zainab she is just so determined to not let anybody's Islamophobia get her down and she just stands up to her teacher who is just a straight-up asshole and she's kind of just like a social justice warrior in that way like she stands up for her identity and what she believes in and I just absolutely love that about it there's just a lot of great discussions in here about race and Islamophobia and everything like that and I just think this book was fabulous and Zainab was so badass so I highly recommend this book it was absolutely amazing so the next book I have to recommend is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson and this is a YA contemporary slash urban fantasy book that involves our main character Mila whose best friend Riley dies and everyone thinks that Riley committed suicide but Mila knows that Riley would never do that so she's an amateur witch and so is Riley so basically Mila tries to find a spell to bring back Riley from the dead just long enough so that she can figure out how she actually died and basically Mila was successful in bringing back Riley but she also accidentally brings back two of the most popular girls in school who also died in that same week as Riley and so basically Mila's in charge of like this gaggle of zombies for like seven days and this book is just absolutely hilarious. I read this in October last year and this book was just amazing. This book got me out of a reading slump. It was just so funny and hilarious. So I really like this book because it has great representation. Our main character Mila is Latinx and plus size so I think this is great in terms of rep and also it has a lot of discussions about fat phobia and everything like that. This has really strong feminist themes and like friendship like girl gang you know undead girl gang and it basically just follows like friendship friendship and being a woman and being badass and like being a witch and this is just absolutely amazing. I love this book so much. I definitely want to reread it again this year during October during spooky time. I just really really enjoyed this book and it has a lot of feminist themes so if you're looking for a really fun YA contemporary like with a dash of urban fantasy then I highly recommend this one. It's amazing. I had to take off my cardigan because it's really hot so just ignore that. But the next book I have to talk about is A Sucky Love Story by Brittany Louise Taylor and this is a book I have never talked about on my channel before because I read it before I started my channel so I didn't really like find a way to talk about this book. But basically this is a non-fiction book that follows Brittany Louise Taylor who is a YouTuber and I actually found out about her from one of Shane Dawson's older videos and he talks to her about her toxic relationship and this book is just chronicling her toxic abusive relationship with a man named Milos and definitely this book is not great in terms of writing style um, because you know Brittany Louise Taylor is a YouTuber not a writer but I think that the story here is really really important and just the representation of an abusive relationship which I know is extremely difficult to talk about and just the fact that she was able to talk about it here and like make a book and just discuss it is just amazing to me. So this basically just follows her getting out of that abusive relationship and just like realizing that she is independent and she can get out of the relationship which is really really difficult to do and I just found that really just badass of her and I really really enjoyed this. I read this um, for Valentine's Day I think like two years ago and I really just enjoyed it so much but it definitely has a lot of trigger warnings um, so be aware of that because you know it is about her being in an abusive relationship but yeah I haven't talked about this on my channel before but I really highly recommend this I gave this four stars like I said it's not really strong in terms of like writing style but I think the story here is really really important and very impactful so definitely pick this one up so the next book I have is woven in moonlight by Isabel Ibanez and this is a Bolivian inspired YA fantasy book that follows our main character Zimena who is the stand-in condesa or stand-in queen in the land of Inca Sisa and basically her and her people were drove out of La Cuidad by the evil usurper Atok and she basically 
since she's acting as the Condesa, the evil Atok asks for her hand in marriage to unite her people and his people. And since she's the stand-in queen, she takes up the offer and basically just tries to win the throne back. I really really enjoyed this book. It was fabulous. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and this just has really great writing, excellent world building, and our main character Zimena is just so badass. Like she will straight up stab someone if she needs to and she is just determined to bring her people back to La Cuidad and I just found this absolutely amazing. Honestly, I think every female character I read in this book is just badass to a T and they don't let men stomp all over them and they take what they want and so I just really, really enjoyed that about this. So if you're looking for a fresh new fantasy to read, then I highly recommend this one. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this on booktube yet and it just came out in January so I think that's why but you should definitely pick this book up. It's so amazing and it's definitely not like any fantasy I've read before. Like it's just so something's just different about it. I don't know. I really really enjoyed this and it wasn't really like cookie cutter for me even though you know it is about a monarchy and all that kind of stuff but I've just never read a Bolivian inspired fantasy before so maybe that's it but I just really really enjoyed the culture in this, the romance, the badass characters. It's great so I highly recommend this one. So the next two books I have are both companion novels in a series. Well it's not really a series but it's like a little uh, universe created by Santia Menon and this is When Dimple Met Rishi and There's Something About Sweetie by Santia Menon and so basically these are both YA contemporary romance books and this one follows uh, Dimple and Rishi who are kind of forced into an arranged marriage but this arrangement is unbeknownst to Dimple and so basically when Dimple goes to a web development retreat for a couple of weeks um, the love interest Rishi, his parents send him to the web development program to kind of woo Dimple into marriage but Dimple isn't really focused on that, she just wants to get a career in web development because she just graduated high school and she wants to go to college for it and I just really love this book, it was absolutely hilarious and and I just think the fact that Dimple like wanted to pave her own path and do something untraditional and kind of just you know break out of her family's mold I really love that about her she's just very like snarky hard-headed career driven she knows what she wants to do with her life and her values are very important to her and she kind of just goes against her family in doing a career that you know her parents don't really want her to do and kind of not wanting marriage at the moment and I don't know I just really really love this and I love Santia Manon's books because I think they're a great balance of culture and romance and you know important discussions and everything like that so I highly recommend this one I gave it four and a half out of five stars so this next one is the companion novel to the one I just showed you called there's something about sweetie and this kind of follows sweetie and Ashish and Ashish is Rishi younger brother from the first book and this is about sweetie and ashish falling in love and basically sweetie um she's fat and basically her mother patronizes her for that and she's like you know you need to lose some weight like just really really rude to sweetie and basically this just deals with sweetie um, facing fat phobia and loving herself and not letting anybody tell her what she should look like or who she should be. So overall I really just love this and I found Sweetie so badass because she knows who she is and she knows that she's beautiful and she knows that she doesn't need to do anything different with herself and just the fact that she's willing to go against her family to do and be what she believes in is just absolutely amazing and I love this book. I read it this month in March. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. It was just stunning. I really have been enjoying Santia Menon's books. They're also really great audiobooks that I highly recommend. So yeah, both of these books I just absolutely adored. Badass female characters in their own way and I just love them. So the next book I have is one that I actually just finished reading yesterday and this one is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Leffenseller. This is a YA fantasy book that I pre-ordered before its release and I just got around to reading it. And this one follows our main character, Alessandra, who is often overlooked because she's the second born daughter in her family and she's just so badass. She knows how much power she wants and how much power she deserves. So basically she sets out 
to court the Shadow King and marry him and kill him and take the throne. So if you're looking for a straight up badass, no holds barred character, then I highly recommend this book. Alessandra does literally whatever she wants. She sleeps with however many people she wants to, you know. She is also a seamstress and she makes her own dresses and she like wears pants under them and like does these really cool designs and she basically just like shocks everyone at the court of the kingdom because she just does everything so differently and she does everything in her own way. So this book is just extremely feminist and our main character is just so badass and I loved reading about her. It was so much fun and she will straight up kill somebody if she needs to or like stab someone in the leg. Like she's just so badass and I loved her and I wanted to date her honestly. Like I fell in love with Alessandra in this book just because she's so badass. She takes what she wants from the world. Like she doesn't let anybody get in her way and overall I just love this. I gave this five out of five stars. It was just fantastic and I had such a good time reading this like I could not put it down it was amazing so if you're looking for like the true epitome of like a badass female character then I highly recommend this book it was fantastic so I think that concludes my badass female character book recommendation video and I hope you guys get around to reading some badass female characters or any feminist literature this month for women's history month I know I'm going to be reading some myself so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video Leave Leave a like, subscribe down below, and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss a single upload. Definitely let me know some other badass female characters you have to recommend to me. I would definitely love to read some, so leave some recommendations down below. And thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!